It's net neutrality part D. The coming storm. This week, Minority Report, Philip K. Dick, Nosedive, China, and hey, guess what Congress did yesterday? Stay tuned. Welcome to Secure Digital Life. And you type in AAA porn or whatever it is you're typing in. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We, I was at a PG show. And I'm really hey. excited to be here. I'm glad you're here because somebody needs to know what's going on. That's right. Okay, so now, now somebody has to drink this. <laughs> <laughs> it's another day. It's another episode. Yeah, he's looking at the wrong camera. You... Oh. Oh, you move my you put my camera over here. Eh, there you cut. Go. Basically, forget you ever saw that. I, I think actually forgetting you ever saw that would really be a good <laughs> idea at this point. Here we are. It's Secure Digital Life. It's another day. It's another act of Congress. Who knows what's going on? We talked about net neutrality uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we've been talking about it ever since. We've been talking about ways to beat it. We've been talking about all the issues. Today, I just want to talk about some of the other issues. I want to talk about what Congress did and maybe some thoughts about what you need to be worried about or maybe not so worried about. Um, one of the first things I wanted to bring, oh, and, and I got to tell you, because, because Russ is not here because he's diseased or something, so I, I don't think they've had to put him down or anything, so he may eventually return, but at the moment he's not here. Um, I know, it's TMI. I, I could give you Grim. We have a video of him being sick, I think, but I, we, we'll skip that for now. Um, I want to talk about uh, three things right up front, because they mean a lot to me, and I think maybe they'll mean something to you as well. And one of them was a recent episode of the show Black Mirror. And if you've never seen Black Mirror, I'll give them a shout out. Um, it, this show is called Nosedive. And it was about uh, this situation where everybody has to maintain their citizen scores. And you maintain your citizen scores by uh, being nice to people, by getting ratings like you do on Uber or whatever. And I like the idea, because it was a really creepy thought, that what if you have to do this? And then they mixed something into that, that that made it even worse, which was what if that controlled the things you could do? So if you took your score, so let's, I'm going to put it in the context of, say, Uber. And, you know, now an Uber driver marks you down because you were late to get in the car or that you were, you know, doing whatever you were doing. And, or you threw up in the back seat, you know, those kind of fun things that you see Uber drivers marking people down for. What if, what if all that was tied to what you did on the internet? So that means if you go to a certain website, if you do this, if you do that, all these things end up being part of your score. And that nosedive episode of Black Mirror tied in very heavily to the idea of China. And what China did and is doing is they started developing this thing called citizen scores. And that sounded pretty scary to me when I started reading about it because what they're doing is they're looking at uh, what people do on the internet and using that as a basis to try to determine uh, whether they should make you loans, whether they, you could do certain things, and it's essentially a good citizen score. One of the questions that came up right away with, with China was, what if you couldn't get a train? Because buying a train ticket meant essentially getting a loan, which essentially, with your, with your uh, mobile device, which essentially meant, wow, what if you couldn't get on a train because of your citizen score? Suddenly that whole thing gets this very ominous, dark chord tone in the background, which I swear I'm going to get a keyboard up here so I can do things like that, and I can just kind of go, da da But, but... The point of that is, is that Nosedive and the things in China, one is a TV show, one is real, are both kind of scary things that relate to net neutrality at the same time. The other one I wanted to mention was Minority Report. One of my favorite writers, if you've never read stuff by him, you may or may not like him, is Philip K. Dick. And Philip K. Dick was a, a pulp fiction writer, essentially, back in the 50s. And... Um, he wrote a book called Minority Report in 1956, and I know they made a movie of it with an actor who I'm not going to name because I don't like him, but tough. But, uh, but the book is essentially about what if the government could predict, and we won't get into all the sci-fi nonsense with it, but what if the government could predict your behavior based on something that you were doing? So could you predict someone was going to become uh, a terrorist? And how could you predict that? And so what that starts to become is, what if I could monitor everything that you did? So I look at your Instagram, 
and I look at your Facebook and your tweets, and I start putting all that together, and we're going to bring in a big word here. It's not a big word. Big data. So the whole idea of big data is that what if in big data I can write algorithms, and I have a friend who does this, and he, he's a really clever guy. What if you could write an algorithm that could sort through immense amounts of data and use facial recognition, site recognition, content recognition, and start to develop a profile of a person? Sounds interesting to me so far. I think you could. I really think you could do that to some degree. We already do it. We do it based on when you go to Amazon, and in fact, on my Amazon today, thanks, daughter. Uh, I, am, I have in, she, my daughter was buying all these little tiny hands. I, I meant to bring some that you put on your fingers. So you have these little hands on each finger, and it's like super creepy. And they were doing this at a show the other night. And I was like, okay, now my whole Amazon feed is inundated with little tiny hands and little tiny feet. Yeah which means that I just got put into like uber creepy category number 17 of like the you know hand and feet molester or something like that. And you just don't know where that goes. But what if I could take all that and I could start to predict your lifestyle based on that? One more reference and then we'll talk about the, what the Congress did. Think about the movie Gattaca from 1997. I don't know if you ever saw it, but if, you, if you've never seen it, it's actually a pretty interesting movie. In the movie Gattaca, everything is based on genetics. And so everybody has to basically validate themselves constantly by touching these little scanners that take a sample of your blood and then match you up to your genetic profile. Because they have genetic profiles for everyone, they can predict when people will die, what kind of diseases they will get. And there's lots of sci-fi genre stuff, if you go read, that you will find related to that about can you get health care. And that's another whole can of, like, snakes. I won't even call it worms. It's more like snakes. But the whole healthcare thing is another whole can of snakes that's out there on the horizon as well. But what if I could predict that you're a person who lives an unhealthy lifestyle because I look at your purchase history on the Internet, and I say that person orders um, alcohol over the Internet. Maybe they have a drinking problem, and on and on and on. And Gattaca kind of led into that sort of idea uh, altogether. But, so what happened yesterday is what we're talking about now. The Congress, uh, both houses, basically rolled back, uh, and we've been talking about this for two weeks, they rolled back the Obama-era privacy regs that were pushed in in 2015. And what this is called is it's called Title II Net Neutrality. And, and Title II is the Telecommunications Act of 1934, if you can imagine. And that then the Telecommunications Act of 96 and all this stuff. But basically what this did, and we've talked about it before, but I'm going to talk about it again because you can just not beat that dead horse enough. Let me tell you. The idea is that ISPs need to have rules imposed on them or not. And some people say we need rules on the ISPs and others say we don't. But there's a complicated problem here. And it's called the problem of the Federal Trade Commission and the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission. So this is two different federal things, all right? So one of them controls business type transactions and one of them controls communications, but only public airwave communications. The FCC controls people like Cox and Comcast, but the FTC controls other ISPs like Google and Facebook and people like that. So here's the thing. When you're worrying about this, maybe you don't need to worry quite so much because Google and Facebook and Twitter and all those things, Amazon, that you're using are already profiling you. They're already collecting your personal information and selling it. So the, one of the big things that people got all freaked out about about this was, are, these, are the ISPs now going to be able to track you? And we've been talking about that, about using Tor and all this kind of stuff. The real pro argument to repealing the, the Title II net neutrality stuff from 2015 is, is just basically that because some entities are controlled by the FTC and some entities are controlled by the FCC, that different standards are being applied to different players and the playing field is not level. And this favors Google and, and so on. Now, here's the bad news. I'll give you a famous quote. Senator Ted Stevens from Alaska 
in, uh, back, I think it was in 2014 or something, and this is the person who's writing these, and not, not Ted Stevens himself, but the, this is the group of people writing these kind of pieces of legislation, describe the internet, and I'm going to quote him, okay? If you haven't heard this quote, get ready, all right? I'm going to quote him, so quotes. The internet is a series of tubes. That's literally what he said. The internet is a series of tubes. So one of the issues with this to me is that the FCC and the FTC are both components of our government that maybe are being run and directed by people that say things like the internet is a series of tubes. And that kind of worries me a little bit because I'm not totally convinced that Senator Stevens actually understands the internet. I mean, maybe he does, and he just misspoke, and he meant to describe it as something else. But hey, it could be a series of tubes. I don't know. It was probably an analogy. Maybe it was subject to interpretation. It was a parable. Who knows? Okay, so the reason that this stuff came about was back in 2007, Comcast was blocking BitTorrent. Now, if you don't know what BitTorrent is, BitTorrent is a tool that you use to download all kinds of stuff. And a lot of the stuff that gets downloaded on BitTorrent is not so kosher. But a lot of it is. So people download movies. They download illegal movies that are pirated. They download all kinds of things. And Comcast, which is an ISP, started blocking BitTorrent because Comcast decided through, you know, in their own wisdom, that BitTorrent was bad. So they blocked it. They just said, you can't use BitTorrent on Com. Now, of course, we all know, and maybe you do too, all sorts of ways we can get around that. And some of you have been watching the show, you know you can get around that kind of stuff now by using things like VPNs and like Tor and all these kind of things. But this was one of the major points in net neutrality, was that this company arbitrarily decided to block some kind of content for their own good, bad, or indifferent reasons and that was where net neutrality kind of got started. And so they worked on it for years, and they finally basically put in place uh, this net neutrality rules of Title II in 2015. So President Obama did that. Uh, today, as of yesterday, they, they rolled this back, the Congress did, so they means Comcast can go back to blocking content, or can they? What this did was it allows the FCC to again make policy. So who knows what policies the FCC will make? Maybe they'll allow Comcast to block BitTorrent. Maybe they'll allow Comcast to block Netflix. Who knows? A second issue, so there's a, there's a whole bunch of issues here and it's so complicated. A second issue is what is called paid prioritization. And paid prioritization was something where uh, a Comcast, a Cox, a whatever, could basically say, if you give us enough money, we will give you what is called a fast lane, and others will get a slow lane. So this means that Netflix could step in and say, we're going to pay you these fees, and Hulu says, we're not going to pay you these fees, and that means when you want to stream Netflix and watch Black Mirror, it will stream vastly faster than when you want to watch something on Hulu. And so there was a lot of concerns about this creating... Uh, some kind of uneven play field or unfair competition. And again, so net neutrality stepped in and said, you can't do this. You can't have paid prioritization. You can't use fast lanes at all. So in 2015, all that went into place, sort of. It still hasn't been sorted out. It's not exactly clear exactly how it was being imposed or legislated, but it, it was there for a little while. So three biggest components of net neutrality that has now been rescinded. One, no blocking legal content services and non-harmful devices. So that means if something's legal, if something is not considered harmful, and again, this legal language is so snaky because, you know, who knows how you determine what that means. But so, you know, if a website in Denmark is broadcasting porn that's legal in Denmark, can you watch it in the U.S.? Can Comcast block it because now it's illegal? I mean, it, uh, and then you end up with a room full of lawyers and they all slap each other for a while and then somebody makes a decision about what's going to happen. Um, no throttling. So, I mean, you, you want to throttle something by the time you read all this, but, but throttling means that I go in my network controls and I actually uh, pare down your connection. So that means that I'm going to take certain users and I'm going to give them less bandwidth and less access than other users for the same price. Now, there's always a price thing. So if I jump on the price thing and we start talking about ups and downs of price, eh, all bets are off. 
But if you're paying the same price as the person who lives next door to you, they can't throttle you over that person. So here's the example. The person next door to you every morning gets up and goes to the Wall Street Journal and reads the news. You get up every morning and watch porn. I know, we're not supposed to say that here. You get up and watch Disney. And you get up and watch Disney, and they get up and, and read the Wall Street Journal. Now, nobody's paying anybody at this point. You have the same service. You have the same level of service from your ISP. Throttling means the ISP decides they don't like the Wall Street Journal, and they like Disney. Why? I don't know. They just make some arbitrary decision. And they start throttling back the Wall Street Journal. So your bandwidth is going to be slower. It also can just mean that they decide to throttle you back because they don't like your neighborhood, because they don't like your looks, because they don't like whatever. And that part gets a little scary, too, because you can effectively change the way people use a service by making it faster or slower. And you know that by now. You know that if you go to do something... Um, you want to play a game online and it's really slow and the servers are terrible, you may find a different game to play. So there's some issues like that. And then the other third piece was no paid prioritization. So they would not allow this fast lane stuff to come along. Um, now, the, some of the cons of this is that, I mean, the cons of, of having that neutrality is that Cox and Comcast and so forth are basically being subjected to a bunch of old regulations that they say are unfair practice. Because remember, Google and Twitter and Facebook and Amazon, they can already do all these things. Amazon can throttle you. They're not subject to the FCC. Google can throttle you. They're not subject to the FCC. Google can sell paid prioritization. They can sell ads so that your ad's at the top of the list. They can do all these things because they are subject to the FTC, not the FCC. So some of this stuff is really not as huge of a scary thing as others. A lot of people are really outraged by this being rolled back. And I'm trying to sort of be in the middle on it because I'm not totally sure that, that a lot of this wasn't already being done. The main argument in favor of net neutrality is basically is the internet a utility, a public resource, so like electricity. And a lot of these rules and regs apply to those kind of things too. Or is it a commodity? And so the best way to think of those two things is Google, it's a commodity. Cox, it's being treated as a public resource. So that's why there's a sort of separation of, of church and state there. One of them is getting a different kind of treatment than the other one. And so that's Cox's and Comcast's whole argument about this. So the things that you need to remember primarily about some of this stuff. One, if you're using Amazon, Tor isn't going to help you. Amazon can still profile you if you use an account on Amazon. Now, I guess if you're fully anonymized... So if you go in, you create a fake identity with fake credit cards, fake bank accounts, and you take it all the way down the line, I guess there's some way you could get a little, you know, I live in a cabin in the woods and, you know, and keep my fingernail clippings and matchboxes because they talk to me at night. Maybe you can be that level of anonymous, but it's very, very difficult for most of us to maintain that kind of anonymity on the internet. And, it, and that worries me just a little bit. Uh, because I'm not sure we're going to be able to get around that regardless. But it, as this was repealed, there are some bad things that could, and, and I'm going to, that's in bold, could, not will, just could. And I'll talk about why maybe they won't too. One of those things is censorship. And certainly in our culture, in our society, we have seen censorship done before. Uh, long ago, they censored movies. They quit doing that, and they sort of started using a de jour type of censorship, which is called the, the Motion Picture Ratings Association, and that's all a big nebulous snake pit, too. But censorship is something that they could start doing. So now, under net neutrality, they're not allowed to do that. So unless it's illegal content, and we, we already talked about that a little bit, under that, what happens is if an ISP decided they do not want to support, say, fake news, and what does that mean? Beats me. What about inappropriate? Uh, there's a famous old quote about, I don't know what pornography is, but I know it when I see it. Uh, different people have wildly different interpretations of what that means. But what if an ISP, uh, and I, I try to stay out of the political piece of it, but what if an ISP is owned by a family who absolutely hates baseball 
We'll just keep it off the whole pornography thing and religion thing. I, boy, it would be fun, though. Uh, hold me back. But let's just say they hate baseball, and they decide that they're going to censor baseball. I mean, they have an argument that baseball is, you know, this game they don't like, that it's, you know, the players behave inappropriately or people were spitting or something and it really bothered them. So there's a bit of an issue there, but let me just put it back in context. This has been going on forever. Think about this one. HBO. You ever watch HBO? Wow. I mean, you know, it's like, I mean, you have to put nudity in capital letters for some of the shows, and I'm not offended. I don't get offended. I mean, you can have nudity on the city streets for all I care, but, but think about how HBO is, is treated versus how ABC or NBC is treated, because the FCC controls ABC, NBC, CBS, because they're considered public airwaves. HBO, on the other hand, is on cable. It's not broadcast, so the FTC gets involved. Same thing. And so far, we haven't seen vast amounts of censorship that we know about. Of course, would you know it if it was happening? No, you wouldn't, so who knows. Uh, another one that comes up is discrimination. There's been some discussion about that. Uh, could these entities decide they're going to discriminate against a group of people because they don't like them, because they're biased? And certainly we have plenty of controversy about that kind of stuff right now in our society. And here's the scariest one of all. This, one, this one's the one that I don't like. Good citizen scores. So go watch Nosedive. But um, good citizen scores, China's doing it. Why can't the U.S. do it? And if they can take your information and sell it, guess who could buy it? How about the government? Could it be Satan? No, sorry. That's, that's a really dated reference. But Dana Carvey, I know you're out there, so just keep, keep that in mind. But the point is, is that what if the government decided to use big data and start profiling you as in, say, something like Minority Report? Could you go out and arrest someone if their score got bad enough? And that's kind of nosedive, Minority Report, China altogether. What if you go to Al Jazeera and you look at the news and your score goes down and you go and look at Breitbart and your score goes up? or fill in whatever blanks you want to put there. All those things would have a massive effect on how society and how the internet itself actually works. But remember, this is not not being done already. I mean, some of this is already going on. Amazon is profiling you. Google's profiling you. I just keep saying that because I want to be sure you understand that, uh, that that kind of thing is going on. So the bottom line is ISPs feel they're being treated unfairly because they're subject to regulations from the FCC as opposed to the FTC like Google and Amazon and all those people and so on. All the negatives, well, they may already be there. Uh, Amazon could already be selling your information to the government. They, they, I don't think they are, but they could be. And if that was going on, then guess what? That's going on. Um, that's about all the time we have to talk about this crazy, insane topic. I do want to tell my friends at Lands and Lake Mobile Detailing. They told me they were going to watch today. Hi, Dave. You know who you are. We'll see you next week on another episode of SDL. SDL.